Before we dive into design patterns, I want to go over the tools that you will need for this course, as well as the tools that I will use. What you'll see on screen is very close to the environment that I use on a daily basis, and I might use some add-ons that you do not, so whenever they pop up on screen, I want you to be aware of what they are and what they are there for, so that you're not scratching your head thinking, what in the world is that? Now, I assume that you have a fairly good understanding of C-sharp. If you don't, I highly recommend that you start with a good course that teaches you the fundamentals of the language. There's one here at Tuts Plus, and you'll find a couple more advanced courses as well. I also assume that you have some version of Visual Studio installed. But if you don't, you can download and install one of the free Express editions. While you could technically use any Express edition, you'll want the Visual Studio Express for desktop if you want to follow along line by line. To download Visual Studio Express, just do a search. Search for Visual Studio Express, and I believe it's the first hit will take you to the appropriate web page. And you will see different versions of Visual Studio Express. There's one for web, there's one for Windows, but this is for Windows 8 applications. This is not for desktop applications, but if you wanted to go with that version of Express, feel free to do so. What you will want to follow along with me is the Express edition for Windows desktop. So you will want to click on download there, and then you will want to choose how to install Visual Studio Express. You can do so with a web installer, or you can download the ISO. Now, while the Express editions of Visual Studio are free, Microsoft does want you to register for them. In fact, they give you 30 days to register. And if you don't register after 30 days, then you lose access to the application. Well, no, that's not really true. You can still run the application, but you can't do anything in it until you register. But that's a fairly painless process. So now let's talk about the environment that I have. I have Visual Studio Professional 2013, and I have two add-ons installed. One is JetBrains ReSharper. This is a wonderful add-on that adds a lot of features to Visual Studio. And frankly, I will never not use ReSharper ever again. It's just that good. So if you have one of the paid for versions of Visual Studio, I highly recommend that you purchase ReSharper. But with saying that, you don't have to have it for this course. The second add-on that I have installed is one called InCrunch. And you can see this little dot over here, this green dot and then this arrow. InCrunch is a test runner and it's also a code coverage tool. In some of the lessons, you will see different color dots. Here we see green because that means that everything is passing, but we will also see red and we will see white as well. If it's red, then that means that the test has not passed. If it's white, that means that there is not a test that covers that little bit of code. So for example, if I write an assertion, let's just do assert is, tr well, is false, and then let's pass in true. This is obviously not going to pass, so we get a red X, and this signifies that this particular test failed. But if I change true to false, then that test is going to pass. Now, the reason why I'm using InCrunch is because you can see that it runs automatically. This will compile our code after every change that I make. And after it compiles, it will run any tests. So as we are covering some of the concepts of design patterns, we get immediate feedback as to whether something works or not. As far as projects are concerned, I primarily use console applications, class libraries, and then test projects. For most lessons, you're going to see at least two projects in a solution. You'll see either a console or a class library project, and then you will see a test project. But there will be some lessons where there aren't any test projects, or there might just be one project, which would be a console or a class library. And so that's basically it. There's really nothing too fancy with my particular setup. I just wanted you to be aware of what I have installed. So in the next lesson, we're going to talk about abstractions, and specifically, we're going to talk about interfaces, because we will use interfaces in just about every design pattern.